Hey, what's up? Lee Ron here. Today I'm going to teach you how to paint a truly a la prima scene of an ocean at night. Very challenging, so I kept it too small because you need really dark paint here and really to pay attention to the darker values. I hope you're going to enjoy this one. Let's get to it. So this process is actually very fast. Once you uh, get everything done a la prima without letting everything wet, the process is actually quite fast and you'd be surprised at how many different subjects this approach and process can be applied to. It won't always be the entire scene. Sometimes it'll be just a small part of it. Now, but in any case, a few words about the drawing. I'm placing in, there is barely anything really to draw here. I'm just placing in the line separating the sky and the ocean and then I'm putting indications for where I want those beautiful lights on the ocean's um, surface to show. Uh, notice how I started with two lines that represent the overall shape of these highlights and only then I start putting in the details. I find that this helps me get the overall gesture so to speak and have things be just look better honestly better design. Uh, I then put a couple of kind of partial circles or rings there to indicate where light comes from uh, and then well, we're off to the races and it's just getting started top to bottom. Now I will note I am going for a bit of a higher key than the reference photo so it's not going to be pitch black everything is going to be a little lighter the the only important part is it's going to be lighter together so the, I, it's like I increase the brightness of everything so uh, relative to one another the values are still kept so you saw me starting with a very uh, thin watery wash up top and then I'm slowly gradually darkening it uh, and it's really important at this stage to remember you need a lot of paint. Now, it doesn't look like I have a lot of paint in the well, but that's actually quite a lot on the left bottom uh, corner. There's quite a lot of it. By the way, sorry for the noise from outside. That's an annoying little truck doing a reverse for an hour. <laughs> uh, but in any case, more wet and wet into the sides, especially. That's where the darkest areas are, as you see, uh, except for the ocean itself, right? As soon as we get to the ocean, I need to go with pitch black. Now, one thing I would have improved is put the paper at more of an angle to have less of the paint go up. You see a lot of the blackness goes up. Now, here comes the fun part, and that is designing these highlights. And I find that this Lamison brush is just perfect for that. It has this beautiful way of um, bringing out the, the paper's texture uh, after the paint has almost ran out of the brush. Uh, and you'll see I'm working on this at my leisure because too many times have I gone too deep into the highlight and only later realized that I, I, I missed a whole lot of sections that should have been kept as a highlight. So I'm really taking my time to design these shapes. Uh, one more important element here is the how how horizontal they are you have to keep these shapes as horizontal as possible to convey that it's a surface of a, an ocean that we're looking at now if you go weird diagonals or too much of a diagonal it will be interpreted as unevenness or maybe the message will be lost and on top of that you have to remember one important fact you have to go super duper dark here very dark the ocean is just pitch black uh, and again this is why I, I constrained this painting into this small of, a, of an area because uh, had I gone larger it would have been a nightmare honestly and I would have needed to mix in advance all of the black paint and it's just much harder so I find it a lot easier to paint smaller sizes and actually that's a cure for a lot of people's issues if you're having trouble controlling your shapes making sure things stay wet all of that can be cured by going a little smaller now if you're advanced sometimes I'll, I'll suggest the other thing trying to paint larger but you know that's uh, it really does depend on the context. Uh, hopefully you know where you're at. Uh, but here I am designing the shape, closing in more and more, taking my time. A big factor here is to become familiar with your brushes. If I was not familiar with this brush, I wouldn't have been able to get these to look just the way I want them to. Uh, so just have that in mind. Uh, one thing, that darkness in the middle of the ripples should have been closer to us. I put it all in kind of the middle where it should be more towards the bottom. That's overall design things. The large shapes are there and I do think they look good and convincing. Now I'm just grabbing a bit more paint and darkening some sections, especially on the left. You do see some uh, some light reflecting on the on the paper, which makes it appear a little lighter, but it will dry much better. And I will show you a scan of the final result after we're done. So now what I'm doing is just a few final steps in designing these shapes. 
needed to switch to a smaller brush to really get that nuance there. Now here you do see me going just a little bit diagonal uh, because the ripples are, they aren't all perfectly vertical, of course, because uh, horizontal, sorry, because then you'll just get a bunch of vert uh, horizontal lines. There is a bit of a diagonal element to them, but it's so subtle that most people will do better to veer towards the uh, horizontal rather than the vertical. Now, but only now I allow myself to kind of bring that back out. You'll notice again the right side of the ocean ble ble bled into the sky a little too much. So again, control the angle of the paper. I'd probably, had I painted this just, you know, without filming, I would have just grabbed the entire board and really rotated um, uh, vertically so that it all goes down and doesn't go back up. It's also a matter of timing. There's a lot uh, to be connected here, uh, a lot of skills that connect together. And I find that these scenes that are fast and just to the point, on the one hand, yes, they're fast and small in scale, but they actually are very demanding technique-wise. So be patient and forgiving with yourself if you're going to paint this kind of a thing. Uh, here I want to show you, again, the final result up close and then also the scan. I really hope you enjoy this one. Uh, again, not an easy one, but a simple scene, let's say. Uh, so let's wrap it up. So thank you once again for watching. If you want to learn how to let go, enjoy the painting process, enjoy watercolor, be sure to check out the frustration-free watercolor course. Link is in the description box below. We'll show you how to get the result you want while enjoying the process, actually letting go, painting freely, letting paint the paint, the watercolors do what they do best. I want to thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next vid real soon.